Hello everyone, welcome to lesson 7 of C programming on the Mac. In this tutorial, I'm going to be covering the if statement, which is one of the key things in programming. Uh, basically allows the computer to do a certain thing or not do a certain thing. So it gives the computer options uh, to see. Uh, that's pretty much what it does. So uh, it's kind of hard to explain, but I will make it a little more clear just by making the tutorial. So. Here we go. Uh, we're going to start with making two integers. So int num1, int num2, and then I'm going to give them different values. Uh, that can be 10, and this can be make this 5. So the if statement works like this. We have an if, and then we have a condition, and then we have a statement. So the condition is basically, if this is true, then this will execute. Or this code, well, this whatever is between these braces will happen. So, uh, in the real world, you could say if I have three dollars, then I will buy a coffee. So, basically, the condition is if you have those three dollars, and then the statement would be uh, buying that coffee. So, um, in this case, we can just say, um, uh, getting off the coffee example here, we have num1. If it's, uh, let's say, if it's less than, less than, actually, start with a greater than, greater than 5. So if we have um, more than 5, if this number right here is greater than 5, then it will execute whatever we tell it. So we're going to tell it to print a little message saying this is true. Okay, so since num1 has a value of 10, it is greater than 5. And then it will print whatever's between these braces, so it'll say this is true. So let's go ahead and run this. And as you can see, this is true. So that is a little intro to if. Um, so right here, if you were kind of wondering what this is, uh, this is known as the comparative operator. And what it does is compares the two numbers. So there's uh, six different signs that you have to be concerned uh, with right now. Um, that's greater than, it's greater than or equal to, that means that uh, it's this number and including this number. So right now, if I left it as this, if num1 was equal to 5, this would this statement right here would be false, because this doesn't include 5. It has to be greater than this value to be true. So greater than or equal to allows you to say if num1 is, is 5, and, it, and it's, if it's greater than, equal, greater than or equal to 5, then this is true, and then it would print this. You get the idea. So the same thing works for less than. If uh, this was less than or equal to 5, then it would print this, and if it was just less than 5, but not including 5, then it would print this as well. So uh, that's pretty much the general idea for greater than or equal to and less than or equal to. And then we have what is known as equal to. And that's why I said in a previous tutorial, don't call this equals, because this is kind of comparing the two values here, if these are equal to each other. So if, let's say num, uh, or let's just change this to num2. If num2 is equal to 5, 5 is equal to 5, then it prints this out. And I'll just show you this example. As you can see, this is true. And then the last thing that you have to know is not equal to which is exclamation mark and then equal sign. So if this number is anything but 5, then it will be true. So basically, if this value is 6 and it's not equal to 5, then it's true. Basically, whatever what's true is if the statement makes sense. If the statement doesn't make sense, then it's false, basically. So if it's uh, num1, for example, is 10, it's not equal to 5, so it's true. And it'll print this. This is true. And demonstrate that. I'll make another one. This is true. Okay. So now you might be asking, okay, so we can do these if statements. So what's it going to do after it's done this if? So if it's true or if it's false, it's just going to uh, continue down and then it'll end the program. But if we want to make something that it does, let's say, since this is not equal to, or let's say if it's equal to, okay, so num1 is 10, and it's not equal to 5, so it's going to skip down. So what do we what do we put here if we want to have something that executes no matter what? Um, if this is 
this up here is false. So basically, if this doesn't happen, this is going to happen. So our statement, we'll just say printf, this is false. So since num1 is not equal to 5, it's going to say this is false. So it's going to skip down, and then it's going to execute the else for its backup, and then it's going to say this is false right here. So, and you can also make even one more, and this is called an else if statement. And what it does is you can make a condition that says, um, let's see, num1 is uh, not equal to, how about that, not equal to 5. And then, um, you know, change my example here just for a second. Ooh. Just, it'll, it'll make sense in a second. I'm just trying to change it so that what I'm writing makes sense when I test it later. Okay, so this is basically saying, okay, if this is false, then it's going to skip down this else if, and then it'll execute uh, this code. And I'm just going to say this is equal to. Okay, and then, so since num2 has a value of 5, it will work. So this, I'm just going to run through this program, uh, how a computer is actually going to look at it. So it'll say, okay, so num2 is less than, or num2 has a value of 5. Is it less than 5? No, it'd be less than or equal to 5, but it's not less than 5. So it'll skip this if statement, and then it'll go down to this else if. So and then it looks at this, uh, okay, so num2 has a value of 5. Is it equal to 5? Yes, it is. So it's going to do this else if statement right here. It do it's ever in between the brackets, and then it's going to break out of this whole block of code right here. Since if and else are related to each other, um, as soon as one of these, either if, else if, or else is, is true, it's going to skip all the rest. So if this was true, it would skip all this and it'd be done with the program. And by the way, you can also make as many else ifs as you want, if you want to have different conditions in there. So that's pretty much if statements for you. Um, comparative operators is the main thing, and uh, the if statement as a whole. And you can also just leave, oops, you can also just leave the if as an if. You don't actually have to put an else uh, to have a backup. Sometimes you don't want to. So this is just uh, the if statement for you. Um, also, very important thing after this tutorial, if you uh, check out links in the sidebar. I will have one for um, all the comparative operators, as well as a little test that I've made up. Um, it's basically a recap of everything from lessons one through seven. Um, so if you hit that link, you'll get a PDF and just a bunch of questions on uh, what you've already learned. So if you can fill that out, you are ready to work on uh, lesson eight, and that'll be uh, up, I'm sure, as soon as you're probably done that tutorial. So anyway, um, yeah, just check out uh, the PDF, uh, answer some questions, make sure you know what, how to do this stuff already, and then you can move on. Uh, if you like these tutorials, subscribe to the channel, and check out all the other tutorials as well. And if you have any questions, you can comment on any of the videos as well. Alright, thanks. See ya.